Welcome to Core Cutting this week, number 23, the show where I give you my opinion on some of the biggest stories in the world of core cutting. Now, if you want to learn more about these stories in the show notes down below, it is full links to every story we covered today. And also, you got a story you think should have been covered? Do you have an opinion? I'd love to hear what you think. Leave us a comment and let us know. But let's dive right into it. First up is probably the most interesting story of the past week. Amazon has confirmed the existence of the Fire TV Cube. You remember last year, about the time the Apple TV 4K was announced, it was leaked that the Amazon was working on a pendant Fire TV and a Cube Fire TV with a built-in Amazon like dot echo device in it. That Cube device just never came, and it never came, and never came. The pendant has come out. We, we currently, there's a debate. Is it the Fire TV 3? Is it a new line of Fire TV? Amazon has waffled back and forth a little bit there. Um, sometimes they call it the pendant. Sometimes they call it the Fire TV 3. But now we're getting a new line of Fire TVs, the Fire TV Cube. I'll throw an image of it right up here so you can check it out. Uh, but let's break down what we know about it. Um, the, it's a 4K device. It includes... Um, Amazon's Echo Dot-like device. Far field voice recognition, be able to control Amazon's Alexa, see if she triggers here in a second, um, and be able to uh, ask it to do commands without having to use the remote. Now, you've been able to use your Fire TV remote to um, access voice commands and so forth. Now, just built into the box. So with the typical trigger words, whatever you said that out, could be computer, could be Amazon, um, will trigger it and allow you to use voice commands through it. No Ethernet and gadget posted what is reported to be a scan from the Fire TV Cube manual, and they are standing behind that. This is it. it shows a USB C in there um, port, which you can plug a U uh, Ethernet adapter to so still get Ethernet, just no built in Ethernet. Uh, the USB C probably means it's going to be expandable in the future, maybe. Uh, we'll see. Somebody reported it was ha uh, had rumors have been flying around that it would have a TV tuner. Maybe through the USB C, you could plug in a TV tuner adapter on that. But looking at the device, looking at what Engadget posted, again, link in the show notes, there is no TV tuner on it, which would have been kind of cool. Roku has a TV tuner one built in for other markets with like cable providers who use Roku as the set top box. They haven't brought that to the United States. Roku has the Roku TVs, Amazon has the Amazon Fire TVs that have over the air TV antenna support built in. Be cool if they did that on their boxes. For now though, has not come to fruition. You still need something like a Tableau DVR that you can use as the app on the Fire TV to stream it there. So uh, I'm excited about this. I think it's a fun idea. I, I like the idea of taking the Echo and the Fire TV and mash them together, removing what well, will come with a remote. In theory, you won't need this remote and you could just use your voice to communicate to the Fire TV, which is a pretty cool feature. Um, as far as pricing, AM, AFTV News is reporting it will cost over $100. Makes sense. It's a 4K Fire TV plus an Echo device smashed together. It will be 4K. Um, we'll have to wait and see if it will be uh, uh, HDR, but I'm assuming it will be. I think I read somewhere that it will be. Don't hold me on that as I record this. So, uh, will you upgrade? Here's the question. Um, it's 4K, it's HDR. The second gen is 4K. Um, the pendant offers that. Uh, what will be offered here? It'll probably be much more powerful than the pendant. Will it be more powerful than the second gen Fire TV box? The question still is, what out there is going to get people to upgrade for the um, second gen Fire TV boxes to go? The pendant, while being able to hide behind your TV, is actually noticeably slower than the second gen Fire TV box. So we'll wait and see what happens there. Hey, let's dive in the next story. Uh, stay in the world of media streamers. Roku it has announced their 8.1 update. Now, a few interesting things here. Uh, not a lot announced about the physical software. Now, yes, you will be able to get private listing on four devices now. In the past, Roku only allowed you to have one phone or tablet connected to your Roku TV for or um, streaming player for private listening. Now you can have four. So you, if you have multiple kids that want to listen to the TV but parents want it quiet, they can now have multiple tablets or TVs using the app um, that will connect there and allow you to stream audio. Uh, they also announced that uh, the Roku channel will be adding live news. ABC News, Cheddar, uh, and a few others have all partnered up to bring live news for free into the Roku channel, which is a free streaming service. Now, when we get on demand now, you'll also get 
uh, live news through these news services. Past that, they're saying bug fixes. Now, Roku is notorious for rolling out features that they didn't really announce. Uh, for instance, when they added they had the quick binds and when they added the confirmations um, for when you're playing, uh, that was new. For, for example, in the past, if I was streaming Netflix and my daughter sat in the remote, it would exit that stream and launch into Amazon without asking. Now, when you if you bump that bond, it says, um, ask you to confirm it on the screen if you're streaming. If you're not streaming anything, you're just in a menu, you're on the home screen, it will auto launch without having to ask you first. Uh, Roku's done many things like that. That was one example of something they did not announce. Um, recently, they changed it so that when you use the voice search, it used to be if you were in Netflix or Amazon and you used the voice search, it would exit you out, bring you back to the home screen and do the voice search there. Now they're keeping you inside the app um, for the voice search. So they're, they're his, they have a history of these updates having more in it. So it may be an Easter egg hunt. It always kind of is in spring that when they announce this, we got to kind of unbox it, unpack it, and dig into these updates to find out what's there. Often we get a lot of information about the bug fixes from the developer app. So we'll have to wait and see what Amazon announces, or what, excuse me, Amazon, I was just thinking from the last story, sorry, what Roku announces on their developer end for all the bug fixes. That's often very interesting. For example, um, they recently made some changes to make the loading between episodes a lot faster. And that was something we learned about through a um, developer update, I think last year. So keep an eye on this. Coming out May 2018, Roku OS 8.1 Spring Update. Don't expect anything revolutionary here, um, but expect a lot of bug fixes. That's what they're really pushing. The listing mode, the live TV, and probably some stuff they haven't announced yet. Next up, AT&T is rolling out 5G foundation to more than 100 markets. They are also building hundreds of, or they're, they didn't give a number, they're building a ton of new cell phone towers in preparation for 5G. Now, a lot of people say 5G foundation isn't 5G, and you're right. Uh, if you read the press release, they clearly say that. Uh, 5G foundation will, will provide a um, fundamental change. If I can read the right, so here we go. 5G foundation will build the footprint, I'm summarizing, for 5G. The 5G foundation will offer faster 4G and have the network pre-prepped for when 5G is ready to roll out in the market, making it from a hardware update to a software update for true 5G. Effectively, what AT&T is going around is they're updating a bunch of their cell phone towers with new equipment that um, will allow them basically to easily roll out 5G once they're ready to do it in that market. In the meantime, since that hardware is there, they're using it to speed up 4G. They're calling it 5G foundation. While this isn't um, 5G, true 5G, it is far faster 4G, and it's the doing the hardware side of 5G. Um, a lot of people have kind of um, attacked it, uh, but when you for not being true 5G, but hey, we're laying the 5G network foundation with 5G evolution, um, LTE, LLAA. And it goes in all kinds of other technical terms. But right there, they're very clearly um, talking about their 5G evolution, excuse me, five, it's called 5G evolution, is laying the 5G foundation um, out there. So AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile are all rushing. And it's an interesting point right now because they're speeding up 4G in preparation for 5G. And when 5G comes, it'll offer even more. What, what should we care about 5G? I know I've talked about this a lot here, but 5G offers the promise of being able to um, offer fiber speeds to your home wirelessly. Basically, they cover a few football fields per cell phone tower, and you may say, that's not much. But if you think about it, if you live in a subdivision, if they put one cell phone tower, they can wire the entire subdivision with fiber speeds. Rather than having to run fiber to each individual home in that subdivision, now they can do it in, in a couple weeks, what may have taken months or a year to do in the past. Um, it will also bring new competition. Instead of just being your local cable and DSL provider, now you got a cable DSL, maybe a fiber option to your home. And then on top of it, you have all these 5G wireless fixed internet options. So it's gonna slowly roll out. It's probably rolling out to major cities. Why major cities instead of rural areas first? Well, at t and others are spending billions of dollars to upgrade their networks in preparation for this. The ability to roll out to a major city 
if you can roll out one tower to reach hundreds of people or one tower to reach or one tower to reach thousands of people, excuse me, or one tower to reach a few hundred, uh, well, the profitability is with the thousands. So they're going to do that there first. But they intend to have over half the United States covered by 2020, according to Dish, who's also rolling out 5G. Um, look for it in uh, maybe 100 or so markets by the end of 2018. 2019 is when everybody says this is going to ramp up. You see AT&T with this particular service, Bill and Foundation, Verizon says that they can do it off their current hardware, but they're running a billion dollars worth of fiber to their cell phone towers to handle the excess capacity they will need um, to take on home internet. This is really aimed at home internet. While it probably in the future will be on cell phones, the first devices will be hotspots. Verizon's already shown off a modem that sits in your home, put it by a window, plug it into the wall, it'll create a Wi-Fi signal in your home, and there you go, you have 5G home internet. Um, the other benefits of 5G is you won't need to physically run a truck. If I sign up with a cable company, they got to pay a truck to come from wherever they are to my home and hook me up. Instead, either I can walk into like a Best Buy and buy a modem or they can ship me a modem. I just take this modem, I plug it into my wall, and it probably like a current Wi-Fi modem will have a password. I can go in there, I can change the Wi-Fi address uh, or and password and all the names on that and be all set. Um, so it's definitely a big benefit for core cutting. Um, we'll wait and see how it all plays out. Always keep in mind though, new technologies are more expensive at launch than they will be a few months or years down the road. So keep in mind, they're building it for home internet competition, not for cell phones is the big thing I wanna get across there. Well, there you go, my top five stories from the past week. What would you add to this list? Or excuse me, my top stories, not five, three, um, but what would you add to this list? I'd love to know what your opinions are. We'll do our best to answer your, your questions and your comments. Join us every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern for more core kind of news, tips, tricks, and how-to guides where we do our weekly core kind of Q&A. Visit us at Core Cutters News. We post daily, multiple times a day, all kinds of great core cutting related stories. So join us every Wednesday for our weekly core cutting Q&A, every Friday for our weekly core cutting recap show, and we'll do our best to keep you up to date on everything happening in the world of core cutting.